that needs to be fixed. Ugh. Silence! Silence is all I need. So, time to take care of another noise problem. That kind of noisy breaks in the dry is definitely not acceptable, but it's very much fixable. Noisy breaks in really wet conditions is not that unusual, and although annoying, it usually doesn't affect brake performance. However, in this case, apart from the horrific sound, ooh, I get chills just thinking about it, the brake performance was also heavily reduced. And that tells me that the brake pads and rotors actually got contaminated. I'm pretty sure that the contamination was carelessness on my part. I was cleaning my pistons in a hurry and I wasn't thorough enough uh, wiping the calipers clean before I put the pads back in. And the ride after that was a wet one uh, with a lot of standing water. So I think all that water spray mixed with the brake fluid and contaminated both my pads and my rotors and it happened both on the front and the rear so I don't think a dirty dry train was the cause this time but that is also a possible way to get your pads contaminated especially in the wet. A temporary fix out on a ride would be to like haul ass down the downhill and heat up those brakes but even if that silence everything down it is usually only a temporary fix and the brakes will sooner or later start howling again and also it doesn't really fix that weakening of the brake power so the following method will hopefully fix this issue permanently and the first step is to take care of that brake rotor so let's get dirty and then clean and quiet after experimenting a few times with different degreasers, rubbing alcohol and stuff like that, I have come to the conclusion that nail polish remover or acetone is what worked best for me in this scenario. It's really effective from this kind of cleaning and it's cheap as hell and every self-respecting man has a bottle of this laying around, I'm sure. So I simply pour a bit of this nail polish remover into an old cut up t-shirt and start rubbing the rotor as thoroughly as I can on both sides. I've tried Scott paper towels in past videos but they pretty much get torn up in no time so definitely recommend some kind of rag or like in my case a cut up old t-shirt works perfectly for this. I think it's actually easier to clean the rotors while the wheel is on the bike. That would also minimize the risk of getting the nail polish remover dripping down into the wheel bearings, but I decided to take them off for the sake of this video. If the rotors are really nasty, then I would probably remove the rotors completely, so I could be more generous with the nail polish remover without worrying about it getting into unwanted places. Doing a half assed job on the rotors, especially when you suspect the pads are contaminated, would most likely lead to similar problems down the line. So so I'd rather go overboard with the cleaning here than to save a few minutes. If the rotors are totally nasty, there's also the option of sanding the rotors themselves, but I never needed to go that far. So I will continue to clean the rotors until I see that it doesn't leave any more dirt on the rag or t-shirt. I'm pretty happy with this result. Uh, again, it's easy to forget the back of the rotors, so definitely double check that yes to be safe. So let's move on to the brake pads. Taking them out of the calipers and inspecting them, I can see that they still have a lot of life left in them. If there would have been a lot less compound left, I probably would just have swapped them out for a brand new set of pads, but these I should definitely be able to squeeze some more miles out of. So just by looking at them, you can't really see if they are contaminated or not. From my experience, used pad looks more or less like this, but I can see that they have some shine to them, like they are glazed, if that's a correct word to describe it. I only use organic pads personally, and what I'm looking to restore is the original bronze-ish looking shine that they have when they are new. If you use Sintred or metal pads, I think they have a more silver metal look to them. It's been so long since I used any of those, so feel free to correct me in the comments. So I will take care of these pads in two steps. First, I will clean them with the same nail polish remover that I used on the rotors. Then I will also sand them down with some fine grit sandpaper. 
The reason I want to clean them before I sand them down is that if they are contaminated with oil or chain lube or something else, I want to remove as much of that before sanding them as that could just end up being sanded down into the compound, if that makes sense. And that could mean that they would just start squealing again as soon as I break them in. So I will not hold back on nail polish remover and I will pour it directly onto the pads then scrub the pad compound with a small brush. A toothbrush would also make a perfect tool for this job. Once I'm happy with that, I just lightly wipe them off with some paper tissue. The nail polish remover evaporates really quickly anyway, but it will at least remove some loose particles. Then it's time to sand them down, and I will simply put a piece of fine sandpaper down flat on a table. In this case, it was 320 grit sandpaper. So when sanding this down, I will try to hold the pad flat or parallel with the sandpaper to get a nice and even surface. But if I see that one side of the pad doesn't get affected, I will angle the pad a bit just to make sure the whole surface gets sanded. I won't take off a lot of compound, I just want to get rid of that glazed little surface that's on the top. Comparing the sanded pad with the unsanded, you can see that the sanded pad now has a bit more bronzy shine to it. It's very similar to a brand new pad. So that's what I'm looking for when sanding these pads. Then I just need to take care of the other pad. And once I'm happy with both pads, I will try to remove any dust left over from the process with a paper tissue or the clean part of that t-shirt. So that's both the rotor and the pads taken care of. I'm pretty happy with this result and I should be able to get a few more rides in on these and hopefully they are back to their quiet selves again. Fingers crossed. Since I already have the pads out, I always take the opportunity to clean up inside the calipers. And depending on how the pistons move, I would clean them as well, as I did in this case. I've done another in-depth video on cleaning the pistons, so check that out if you are interested. Links are up in the corner or down in the description. I will stress again though that if you clean the pistons with mineral oil, once they are pushed back into the calipers, take the time and make sure that the caliper is clean and dry before installing the pads. As I said, I think I was not careful enough after cleaning the pistons last time and that was the reason for getting my pads contaminated in this case. So yes, that's do you think everything is done. I will repeat this process on the rear rotor and the rear brake pads as well but I will spare you the repetitiveness of that in this video. So instead, let's jump out and see if these pads and rotors are a bit more quiet sounding. Sound of silence. Don't let your brakes squeal like crazy. Fix that stuff. Now remember, if you do this, you basically reset the pads and the rollers to its original state. So they need to be broken in again. And I've done a video on breaking brake pads up here probably. It's pretty over the top, but if you have some time to kill, can never be too thorough. So I hope you found that interesting or helpful. If you did, Feel free to leave a like, it's always appreciated. And subscribe if you want more tips and tricks and general bike shenanigans. And if you do, I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Nice weather, huh? <laughs>